Hello there. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. Uh, well, we've been doing a little more work here, a little follow-up stuff here on uh, Old Hank. Uh, you saw we got the new cross-member section welded in. There it is up there. You got the coilovers back on. It's not sitting on the springs yet. It's still, it's still supported right on the chassis. But uh, so, so now I'm in the process of making the brackets that will support that red piece that you see up there, the rear uh, bed cross member. I'm in the process of building those. And I made these as you might say locators for the position of the bed when I put the bed on those holes that were in the in the original piece were tight and it left me no adjustment to get that dimension right there even with the same dimension on the other side so what I did is I hogged out the holes in this piece so it would give me enough adjustment I got the bed now where it's equal on both sides and then what I've done is I made those little plates that you see there eighth inch thick with a tight 3 8 hole so that the next time I put I'm gonna weld those plates in place weld them to the red piece uh, as locators essentially and then the two brackets I make in the back for the rear bed support I'll do the same thing make those holes tight uh, I'll bolt them in place when they're welded to the cross member so I know they fit with the bed in the position it's in and uh, four of those lo will locate the bed when I put the bed on permanently. Here's the bracket I'm making for the rear cross member, rear, rear bed cross member. See it's gonna it's gonna hang out just like you see it basically standing up just like that welded to the back side of the chassis cross member and then the piece where you see the silver clamp there, the flat, will be up underneath the bed cross member with the webbing on top of it. I got the other, the big clamp on here because the one that one leaf when I was working with it broke off. Here's one that only has the that that this surface you're looking at right here will weld up against the back side of the chassis cross member and the. Uh, webbing will go on top of that underneath the uh, bed cross member so I you know he's got a I gotta have him weld those shut and then we'll grind that so it looks like a nice radius on the top I'll finish these edges with the sander and the file whatever and then uh, I'll drill the holes and we'll mount them to the bed cross member and then weld them in place so there we are. That's where we're at so far. I mean, you know, that's the progress we've made since uh, you saw us welding across my room. So here we go. Wait, I'm I right now. I'm at a point where I've done some fabrication. I need to wait for the welder to show up for Scott to show up. Okay, so there we are. Two by four block on there is just to keep the two the two angles 
are the same. Otherwise, you wouldn't know whether the angle was equal on both sides. Okay, well, there's another step on the headers. The collectors are fastened. They're not permanent yet, but they're tacked on there. You see them there, right there. So now they'll remove the header and bring them home and finish weld the collector to the pipes. And there's the other one. This side is... Hello there. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. Well, we worked here over the weekend and we got a few things done. Starting with that. There you see the uh, final outcome of uh, moving that chassis cross member back and making the new bed mounts the rear bed mount see the two brackets there the bolts going up into the bed cross member so it's they're tacked they aren't finished welded but they're there they're made and they're tacked ready to finish weld when this whole chassis gets finished welded and we got these attached so those are in place permanently not not finished but permanently in place the one on the other side's done too and these got finished too scott got the headers uh collectors attached to the headers so those are complete now too the flanges are fully welded the pipes are made first of all the flanges are are um completely welded and now the collectors are also attached there's the other one this pipe's the complicated one because of all the stuff it has to miss clutch linkage up here pitman arm over here steering box up here and like i said it all misses that stuff rather nicely it's not easy to assemble but uh once it's in there, it works. There's the notch in the rear, in the front cross member that was made a long time ago. A lot of stuff's been done on this car that uh, once it's finished, you're going to hardly see. So you see now, these are set up to head back there. They'll go through those holes. Don't know exactly how they're going to run, how close to the frame. He hasn't picked mufflers for it yet. And then it'll obviously go up and over the rear end and I think out the back. I'm not sure about that either, though. So anyway, that's what we got done over the weekend. What I'm going to do today is you see the running board and the splash aprons there. Uh, there's a vent somewhere on those tanks. And with them installed, you cannot see where that vent is because uh, uh, the, the tank hangs right there behind the splash apron. On the other side of the tank is the frame. So when you get underneath there and try to look at the tank, the frame's right in front of you. It's right in your way. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is remove the running board and try at least to remove the splash apron, which will expose the tank. And then I can see what I'm working with. And I think what we're going to do is leave it that way while we run the the filler pipe up into the bed 
because I, again, I want to um, I want to confirm everything that I've laid out there before I make any holes and kind of proceed in a slow process. We got some we got two two inch J bends to use to actually make the filler pipe. You know, to do whatever offsets and nineties and bends we need. So that's where I'm going at this point. But I want to uh, uncover the tank so I can see it and find out where the vent is on the tank as the manufacturer, you know, left it. Because I want to bring that up in the same area as the, the cap where you fill the pipe. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to use a little vent underneath the mount that, that mounts the, um, the filler pipe. Anyway, see you later. Bye. Okay, well, there's the tank uncovered. There's the splash apron and the running board. Going to go up there. Unfortunately, it seems like more stuff's going up there than going on the vehicle. But, uh, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Got to think, take things apart to make progress. I'll show you the vent. I found the vent. It's right there. See it? Little hose barb. So uh, when I make the filler pipe, leave the tank here. Uh, I'll just have the vent probably attached to it. Take a little piece of uh, a little piece of hose, and then probably hard pipe the most of the rest of the way up. You know, uh, yeah, you'll see as we build it. We've got some ideas. Hopefully, they're going to work. So now we got a better access to making all of this uh you know putting all this together this is definitely the way to go remove the um, splash shaper it's a pain in the ass doing it i gotta lift the the body a little bit i left the bolts tight on the other side so the body so the cab would move but uh, i did have to uh it was sitting down on top of the splash apron where the splash apron uh, lands on top of the uh, frame there uh, so there was pressure on it I could move the back but I couldn't get the front loose so anyway uh, I finally got it to come loose and pulled it off here we are so like I said there's the tank the saddle tank that's what it looks like you see if you if you have the filler coming out the side of the splash apron it's straight into the tank so you know it's, it's not the gas isn't going to flow like it's going downhill anywhere there's where it leaves the tank and that's the sending unit for the uh, gauge. So anyway, uh, more, I'll show you more when there's more to show you. Soon, hopefully. Bye. Hello there. Welcome back to Blue Hines Garage. It's uh, Sunday the 19th. We're getting this filler thing ironed out, figured out, installed, whatever. Show you more in a second but uh, this is where we're at right now you see we got a hole drilled in the floor and we got a piece of pipe sitting in there with a 45 degree bend at the bottom of it it's part of the J bend that we bought Scott bought and we got a layout to equal that on that side you notice we got rid of the little trapeze for picking up the bed temporarily and here we are Scott's fitting up a little piece over here this is what we're doing coming out of the tank 90 degrees laying on its side with a little extension coming up to that pipe you see going through the floor and with the swedge on the end to go from two inch to two and a quarter and this will be involved somewhere right and that's how we're going to connect the two pieces so the bed can get removed the pipe you saw coming out of the bed is going to be welded to the bed fastened permanently and that will be that clamp will be under the bed to put the two sections together the part coming out of the tank and the part going through the floor of the bed so anyway this turned out to be much more of a chore than anyone would expect but because that never happened. that's just hot rotting you know fabricate 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 everything is a unique piece 
Well, there's an idea what that's going to look like. It's not done yet. The, nothing is welded right there at the top. That little center bracket is tacked just to hold the pipe vertical while we were fitting all the pieces up. Uh, the top piece, nothing's welded above that. The little plate that I made, that little plate is just sitting there right now. The cap is just sitting there right now. Um, here's what we ended up with down at the tank. Let's see, we're coming out of the tank with with the hose. That's two inch pipe. And going into the tank, it's swedged up to two and a quarter because that's what the outlet is on the tank. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like underneath. <sighs> from somewhere over here. Can we see up under here? Yeah, there it is going up and over the frame. And let's see if we can really difficult to show you there it is see it going up through the bed there with the clamp on it so we can take it apart so the piece you saw inside the bed I got to get to a different location where I can show you better hang on see so there's what it looks like from underneath it comes up over the frame with a uh, at an angle with an elbow that makes it vertical and goes up through the floor of the bed Pretty simple and uh, straightforward. Believe it or not, it fought us all the way. The, the, there's, a, like I said, there's a lot of stuff happening in a real short amount of space. And uh, all of it's pretty critical because everything is so short. You have no length to use to as adjustments, you know what I mean? So it's, it's all really critical since it's all so short. But uh, that's what it looks like coming out from the tank. You can see it, the bottom of it there coming out from the tank up over the top of the frame, the, the corner of the frame, outside corner of the frame, and up through the floor. And that, <clears throat> that clamp is one of those V-clamps. Uh, so like I said, the part coming through the bed will actually be and above the, the bed, the filler part above the floor of the bed will be welded permanently to the bed so then when you put the bed on you'll put this elbow that goes into the tank with the clamp on it to connect it to the tank and then what I'm going to do have to do from the tank is also run a vent because you see the vent is right there and what I'm going to do with that I believe is run it along the frame over here and then up under the fender up near the top of the fender there, right underneath the fender behind the wheel, I'll run the vent. So that's the plan. So, see you later. Okay, well, one last thing on this video. Um, Scott's <clears throat> trying to arrange for that tank. That's a reproduction 57 Chevy fuel tank that is designed to uh, accept a fuel injection type fuel pump that goes in the tank to support an LS motor which this car is going to have uh, so he's trying to um, engineer determine whatever you want to call it a mounting for that tank up here in the original location more or less I mean not exactly but the original location of the 57 Chevy tank uh, the difference is there's a couple of things first of all with that fuel injection type pump in the back you need access to the top of the tank once it's installed for changing the pump or anything else you might have to do in the life of this car because the pump goes in the tank you got to be able to remove it or replace it 
Um, there's fuel lines coming out the top of the tank now instead of where the factory had them on the front of the tank. And so you need to remount the tank. Along with that, with the coilovers, uh, there's no way to remove the coilover in the existing trunk floor pan. So that needs to be modified. You see the result of all of that is Scott's cut a big hole across the front of the t uh, floor, the trunk floor, to accommodate all those things, to accommodate the coilovers and accommodate the access to the top of the tank. The next thing is how you're going to mount this tank, because the tank from the factory mounted to the trunk floor with straps. What he's attempting to do is mount the tank to the chassis instead of the body, which means he needs to fabricate some cross members from somewhere that are attached to the frame. So in order to do that, what he's been doing is some layout work like a plumber would do on the floor. Got the car up in the air. And what he's doing is using laser level to plumb down and reproduce all of the areas. That's the, the, the wide line here is the frame. The double line across the back is the rear cross member. There's the other frame. All that stuff in the middle represents the tank and slots that are in the tank where mountings are. You see the round there. That's the hat where the fuel pump is attached. That, that's the access on the top of the tank where the pump goes in and out of the tank. Your um, uh, sender for your gauge, your gas gauge, fuel gauge is there as well. That's part of it. And uh, you see these, those are, those are uh, uh, mm, coilover mounts on a cross member that's up above. So he's working off of that. The idea right at this point is to work off of those and create mounts for the, a mount for the front of the tank in the back put a, a tubular cross member across the back to, for the straps to go to. So the straps would go to something, uh, a cross member that he's going to add here in the front and a cross member he's going to add here in the back made out of tubing. So it kind of goes with all the other tubing supports that are here. Anyway, that's kind of the latest. That's what we're up to right now. Working on that fuel filler for the Model A and the, we're, on, we're in fuel mode in the fuel tank installation here on the 57. The time machine. Anyway, talk to you later. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye.